if all hearts and minds are clear. The first one I want to read is found in the 13th chapter of Matthew. It's a parable. And uh, it's the 13th chapter of Matthew, verse 24. I'll read that parable. <clears throat> now remember, a parable was an earthly saying that had a heavenly meaning behind it, or a spiritual meaning behind it. Verse 24 said, And another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then has the tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, Wilt thou then that we gather them up? And he said, Nay, at least while we gather the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the time of harvest. And at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye gather first the tares and bind them and bundles and burn them and gather the wheat into the barn. And then he went on ahead with some other parables but the apostles came to him and said, Declare this one to us. And he answered them and said, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the children of the kingdom. Uh, but the terrors are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire, so shall it be at the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of the kingdom all things that are offended, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wail where there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Who, who has ears to hear, let him hear. And that's the first place I want to read. The second place, and probably where I'll take a text is here, found in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, starting verse 1. <clears throat> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For what I deliver you, first of all, see, for I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen of Cepheus, then of the twelve. And after that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some has fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, and then of the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me, as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, and not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and the grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that, uh, which is in me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, we preach, and so ye believe. <clears throat> Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word, for the service up to this time. For this Holy Spirit which we felt. Thank you God for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If I was going to entitle or use a text this morning. I'd like to use for a thought. Uh, it still takes the gospel. It still takes the gospel. I'm sure that we could go in this town of Springfield alone. And find a variety of churches that all you have to do is 
join the church, be a member of it. And of course, they always want your money. Uh, God has a plan and a way to do that. And there would be different ways that a person could come and then uh, if they was to die, everybody would just uh, would preach them right into heaven. But there's only one plan of salvation. And that is this death, this burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is the gospel. And that's what uh, needs to be preached today. Is the shed blood of Jesus Christ uh, who loved us enough uh, before he was even born. He knew why he was coming into this world. And he did come into this world and he shedded his blood. Talking about blood, let me say this and then I'll go on. In the Sunday school class one time years ago at Rosedale, uh, we was talking about uh, preaching and and. And women, maybe some women claim to be preachers and all that stuff. And Brother Melvin said, well, you see, life is in the blood. And he says, it takes the male factor to sow the seed. He said, you see, you don't have none of your mother's blood in you. And I must have went. He said, well, if you don't believe me, go ask your doctor. So my mother worked as a cleaning lady over at the Urbana Hospital, and she was cleaning out an empty room one day, and I was in there, and John Posley, Dr. John Posley, walked in, and he was our family doctor. And I said, Doc, can I ask you a question? He said, sure. And uh, I said, do I have any of my mother's blood in me? He said, not one drop. I said, well, where did it come from then? He said, well, technically... It's your own, but it come from the male factor. He said, that's why your name's Baldwin and not McNeely. See? And so there's people right today, oh, that don't believe that. Uh, you, they think, I don't believe that. But that doctor verified it, and the Word of God verifies the fact that life is in the blood. Yeah. And so for people to be saved today, they've got to get under the blood. They've got to have... The blood of Christ. And when it comes to preaching, Brother Melvin said, you take an old chicken, she'll lay an egg every day. But she's not going to go set unless a rooster comes around. He digests all that, and it makes all kinds of sense. And so with the qualifications of what the Timothy said and everything, that rules out women preachers. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm not preaching today about women preachers. I just like to preach... It still takes the gospel to preach. Uh, Peter one time was down at Jopta and uh, he'd went up on a roof and he was praying up there. But back a ways there was a centurion soldier and uh, he was a good man. He was a Gentile but he had converted over to Judaism and he offered up alms before God. He treated people right and all this. And one day while he was praying, an angel came to him and said that you need to send down to Jopta and get Simon the Tainer, or Simon Peter. He's lodging with one Simon the Tainer. Go down and get him and he'll tell you what you need to hear. And so then he'd got a couple, three men together and they went down to Jopta where Simon Peter was at. But Simon had been on the rooftop praying and uh, he was hungry. And uh, the Bible said while he was praying uh, that he fell into like a trance and he saw a sheet as though it's knitted at four corners came down. And when it opened up there was fowls of the air and four-footed beasts and things that was contrary to those under the law to eat and uh, the voice said, uh, slay Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not me, I don't eat anything common or unclean. But he said, what God has cleansed, no man calls common or unclean. 
And about that time, those men came, and God told, told Peter, said, I've sent them, go with them without gainsaying. Ask no questions, just go. And so Peter then, on the next morning, they took off, and they went up, and there uh, Cornelius, which was this centurion soldier, met him, and bowed down to him, and he said to him, he says, uh, stand up. He said, I myself am but a man. And during the meantime, when the men was down hunting for Peter, uh, Cornelius, the, or this here centurion soldier, he had went and got all his family together. And during the meantime, when Peter came, Peter brought some of the Jewish men with him. And, and so then Peter, uh, when Peter got there and he told him to stand up, he himself, as uh, just a man, uh, he said to him that God had showed him uh, that in every nation, he that feareth God is accepted with him. And here's what Peter preached to him. He preached to him about the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit come down upon them and they begin to speak in tongues. You say, well preacher, that means tongues is all right to speak. No, uh, the reason that that happened was because of the Jews that Peter had brought back uh, and they saw Gentiles uh, uh, receiving the Holy Spirit uh, and so that was a sign to the Jew that Gentile people could be saved. Uh, uh, but the main thing about it all, uh, it, still t it still takes uh, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, uh, to save anybody. Uh, and I guarantee you, uh, uh, if you get a genuine born again uh, uh, religion or heartfelt salvation uh, and have this experience with God, uh, uh, your desires will change. Uh, uh, and if you're not sure about something, uh, uh, you'll get in the Word of God uh, or you'll ask a preacher uh, or ask someone who's been on the way a while uh, about the situation. Uh, I agree with the sister back there. Uh, I've got family that I don't understand. Uh, uh, they just don't think nothing about taking off uh, uh, three or four days at some uh, uh, concert. Uh, uh, it's just because it's called, uh, I forget what kind, oh, uh, what kind of music they play. There's Ru or not Rudolph, but there's... Uh, Bluegrass, yeah, that's it. Just because it's a bluegrass constable uh, don't mean it's all right. Uh, you say, well, I like bluegrass. Well, I do too. Uh, and the style of bluegrass is all right. Uh, the style of country is all right. Uh, uh, my friend, because that's about what our singers sing, uh, a sort of country style. Uh, uh, but I want you to know, Jesus said, uh, uh, to come out from amongst the world, uh, uh, be separate from them, uh, uh, my friend today, uh, uh, it still takes the gospel to be saved. Uh, and so then Peter preached there uh, uh, to him. Uh, uh, my friend Philip uh, uh, went and minded God and went down and preached to a eunuch. Uh, and he preached to him about Jesus, uh, him being crucified. Uh, and he got saved. Uh, Paul and Silas got put in jail. Uh, and the jailer said, what must I do uh, uh, to be saved? Uh, he preached to him Jesus Christ uh, and he crucified uh, and whenever Peter and John in the third chapter of Acts uh, uh, came up to a man that was lame for years uh, uh, my friend uh, and they said silver and gold have I none but what I have give to thee in the name of Jesus uh, uh, they was wondering uh, uh, they kept looking upon Peter Peter said don't look at us uh, as though we done it uh, uh, but it was Jesus Christ uh, whom you crucified uh, who got up on the third day uh, uh, my friend and in chapter 4 uh, uh, they had put him in jail overnight uh, and it was going to talk to him uh, but you know what what I'm said what in the world are we going to do uh, that man's above 40 years old uh, uh, we've known him for years uh, and he's a walking uh, some miracles happened uh, I want you to know something uh, it is a miracle uh, when people get saved 
Uh, you say, preacher, the day of miracles are over. Uh, no, sir. Uh, every time someone's born again, uh, uh, brother, it's a miracle that happens. Uh, and what did he say to preach? Uh, uh, my friend over in uh, uh, Timothy, he said to him, Preach the word. Uh, be instant in season, out of season. Uh, uh, reprove, rebuke, and exhort uh, uh, with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, uh, for the time will come uh, uh, when they'll not endure sound doctrine uh, by heaping self teachers uh, having itching ears. Uh, I believe we're in that time today. Uh, yes, my friend. Uh, he said, Preach the word. Why? Because uh, the word will give you life. Uh, uh, John said uh, uh, in the, John 1 and 4 uh, in him was life uh, I want you to know John said in the beginning was the word uh, and the word was with God uh, and the word was God uh, but it said down a little further uh, and the word was made flesh uh, and dwelt among us uh, I want you to know something uh, uh, my friend Jesus uh, is on the right hand of the father uh, uh, make intercession uh, uh, for you and I uh, and I don't know about you uh, uh, but every night when I pray uh, I try to inventory my life uh, and I pray God uh, if there's anything uh, that I even thought that wasn't right today uh, I want you to forgive me uh, uh, say my friend uh, you can be a member of every church uh, every free will Baptist church uh, enterprise Baptist united Baptist Baptist, uh, First Baptist, Southern Baptist, Northern Baptist, uh, every Baptist they are, uh, even the holiness churches, uh, you can be a member of it uh, and still go to hell. Uh, uh, you got to be born again uh, and baptized. Uh, uh, yes, my friend, uh, he said, I come to give you life uh, and that you may have life more abundantly. Uh, uh, my friend, this word will feed you. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, he he said, John did, said uh, uh, it was the bread of life uh, and the water of life, but Jesus said, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, uh, but from every word that proceedeth uh, uh, from the mouth of God. Uh, uh, say today, uh, I'm so glad, uh, uh, my friend, at the age of 13 years old, uh, uh, Jesus saved my soul. Uh, I haven't always been perfect, uh, uh, but I tell you what, it always has happened uh, oh, when I say God forgive me uh, with a contrite spirit and a broken heart uh, uh, brother he's always been there uh, uh, Johnny on the spot uh, and so then uh, of this word that we talk about uh, uh, brother it was an inspired word uh, uh, Timothy said all scriptures uh, are given by the inspiration of God uh, and is profitable for doctrine reproof uh, uh, brother and correction and righteousness uh, uh, there's power in this word. Uh, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel uh, for it's the power of God and the salvation uh, to all them that believe to the Jew first uh, and also the Greek. Uh, I want you to know this morning uh, uh, it still takes the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, in a couple of months, uh, uh, my friend, it'll be time uh, uh, to reelect a pastor uh, or either get you a new one. Uh, I I don't feel like I'm done yet uh, uh, but I'll still obey the church uh, uh, but I know one thing uh, as long as I am pastor uh, uh, I will still teach uh, uh, that it takes the blood of Jesus Christ uh, uh, to save an individual uh, and so then uh, so, so, okay sissy I'll do it uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, John said you want to hear John again you know what uh, I love old John uh, uh, my friend John the Baptist this was a good man. Uh, John the Revelator is even great. Ah, uh, uh, my friend, because he wrote uh, in the book of Revelations. But anyway, uh, uh, look at what John said about him. Uh, he said in chapter 1, uh, I know you've heard this before, uh, but you'll not hear no more rest this year. Uh, I can promise you that much. Uh, and so then he said uh, in chapter 1, he was the son of God. Uh, in chapter 2, he was the son of man. Uh, in chapter 3, 
three, he was the defender of the weak. Uh, in chapter four, he was a soul winner. Uh, in chapter five, he was a great physician. Uh, in chapter six, he was a bread of life. Uh, in chapter seven, he was the water of life. Uh, in chapter eight, he's the defender of the weak. Uh, in chapter nine, he was the light of the world. Uh, in chapter 10, he was the good shepherd. Uh, in chapter 11, he was the prince of life. Uh, but in chapter 12, he's the king. Uh, in chapter 13, he was a great servant. Uh, in chapter 14, he was a great consoler. Uh, in chapter 15, he was the true vine. Uh, in chapter 16, he was the giver of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in chapter 17, uh, uh, he was a model sufferer. Uh, in chapter 18, uh, he was an uplifted savior. Uh, in chapter 19, uh, he was the conqueror of death. Uh, in chapter 20 or 21, he was... Uh, a restore to all the repentance. In other words, everybody that repented, he restored their life. So then, it still takes the gospel. I'm getting at the age like everybody else when they get up in their mid-70s and 80s. I'm getting forgetful too. You don't believe me, ask Linda. I'm glad I got her, you know. That's funny. There was a Western one time, if I can think of it. I can't even think of it now. But anyway, Clint Eastwood starred in that Western. And I couldn't think of his name. And I said, who starred in that Western? And they said, who? And I said, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> oh, yeah, Clint Eastwood. That's who it was, you know. I got a neighbor. I can think of his name half the time. Half the time I can't. Good neighbor. But things like that starting to happen. I said, I hope it never gets to the point that I never, or that I can't remember how it, what it takes to be saved. And I don't think I will because God's bigger than that. What does it take? It still takes the gospel of Jesus Christ to be saved. If the world lasts another 10 years, it still takes the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And a separated life from the world. That's what he saved us from. From the world. He didn't save us in the world, but from the world. And it still takes the gospel. And I trust that we can all live it and be pleasing unto the Lord. There's a lot to pray about. There's a lot to, a lot to do. There always is a lot to do. And I trust that this coming year that we can grow. There, we got some possibilities and some potentials, you know, but we need to see him react. I'd like to see Ole get in church. You know the last time I seen Ole get saved? Over 55 years ago. Heard the Atwell hit the altar like you wouldn't believe because they landed on the moon. They just knew the world was going to come to an end. I want you to know something. The world's still coming to an end. It's still coming to an end. And sometimes I like to tell Linda, get rid of Netflix or whatever it is on television because I go to 10. I don't mind watching the Pickers or even Pawn Shop. But when ancient aliens come on there, that just burns me up. I just turn it. They've got us clear out there someplace. Now, it said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, I know starting out the second chapter, it says, thus the heavens and the earth was finished, and all the host of them. I don't know what he's got out there, if he wanted us to know, he would have told us in his word. Yeah, I believe he would have told us in the word. I don't see no sinners here today. But if you was, I'm going to tell you, it's going to take the gospel to be saved. Let's stand to our feet.